My name is Abbas Simpindi. I am the CEO of Media Challenge Initiative. At Media Challenge Initiative, we are building the next generation of journalists, uh, storytellers and leaders. And we are working to uh, build a cadre of journalists that believe journalism can make the world a better place. And in the future, those that can challenge the negative narratives about uh, the African continent and be able to tell um, our native stories, the stories that will change you know, history and, and uh, the generations to come be able to read about what was in our countries and on our continent. So my story and my passion for media starts with my grandmother who really opened me up to understand the, the, the relevance and importance of media. When I was young, I would switch on the radio for her to listen to news or even just read the newspaper and interpret for her, uh, translate into her native language. And for me, the spark in her eyes would just sort of like give me that idea of, you know, information is crucial for, for people. And um, I started to understand like you can use journalism to create better world or you can use journalism to make people smile or you can use journalism to just uh, create a happy world for everyone. Um, as I grew older I, I fell in love with journalism so I, I thought I would work on TV or radio but that never worked so I ended up falling in love with creating platforms for young journalists and young storytellers so today I run the Media Challenge Initiative. Uh, the story of how it starts is also through this idea of uh, a failed internship that becomes an opportunity for, for young journalists who are to come. So you walk into a media house and you are told you need to know someone inside for you to get an internship. And that was the beginning. So I was walking back to school after that experience and I was asking myself how many other young people go through the same uh, challenge. And uh, I contacted my friends. Uh, back at the university and we started the Inter-University Media Challenge which would be a competition that would bring the media and young journalists together. Young journalists would compete against each other and then they would showcase their talents and skills and the media can scout direct for internship for jobs. Uh, pretty much that's the how we started and here we are now uh, since 2012 we have uh, the MCI Media Hub which is uh, a center of amplifying media innovation. Uh, we have uh, the MCI radio where young people can practice radio presentation and production. We run a fellowship program. The top 26 young journalists in the country go through that and they are mentored and trained to become what we call a one man, one woman army journalist. And uh, they are pretty much right now populated in the different media houses. Uh, and, and we run other several activities. We run an academy here where you can come and you know, pretty much train. I think that MCI has uh, become a recruitment ground for the media. Uh, previously, um, media houses would struggle to find talent. They would have to run adverts in the newspapers and on TV to scout talent. Ever since MCI came on board, it has, we've made it easy for media houses to scout talent. And the way we've changed uh, that process is we have a fellowship program, we have the academy. So we help universities and the market connect together because we are able to bring young journalists and open them up to opportunities in the media landscape. And uh, those young journalists have gone through really, really a critical curriculum on multimedia journalism, digital journalism, fact-checking, data journalism. So these are you know, sort of like 21st century skills that we create as opportunities for them. And this is, these are skills that they will not get at the university. Um, and, and I think they move on to be able to practice those skills in the universities, which essentially in the, in the job market, which helps to change how journalism is being done. I have never lived a desperate life. <laughs> I think that uh, um, I grew up in a, in a, in a community um, environment where everyone had a chance to contribute to my growth. 
So I, I appreciate that background where you had aunties and, and, and uncles uh, take care of you. So, but I think to your question of what is the challenge that is you know, facing young people today, I, I think there it's not just one. Uh, there are very many challenges and it's from one person to another. You cannot compare these experiences. The challenge that I face is not the same challenge that another young person is also going through. So we can't just put them in, in, in sort of like one um, basket. However, I think there are many opportunities that young people have today that they need to be able to take advantage of. I think with the internet now, um, young people have you know, an array of opportunities that maybe our ancestors you know, 20, 30 years back had here in Uganda. So it's for me that becomes also a challenge because it's just a lot of things going on that young people need to be able to make a choice and make decisions uh, on what they want to be, who they want to be and who they want to become in the next 20 or 30 years and that decision must be done now. The challenge is, are they getting the best guidance to be able to make those decisions? That's, uh, for me, I think that's where the challenge is and, and, and whoever is working with young people now, we need to be able to provide a platform that sort of helps them to process all this information that they receive from different people and also helps them to make the best decision that can not only change their lives in the next 10 or 20 years, but also change the lives of other people around them. I can speak to like one of the best moments uh, in my life where we, which you're asking, where we were, I was mentioned by President Barack Obama as one of the you know, influential young um, Africans on the continent. Um, it will forever, you know, uh, be a moment that I, I recall sort of like it's always there um, it's one of the best moments of, of my life of my career but also for media challenge initiative as an organization it wasn't really about me as a ceo i, I of course <laughs> a gate to celebrate or be celebrated but i think that mention was in, in relation to the team that i work with in relation to the young journalists who trained over the years and the evidence is there so I think President Obama's mention um, sort of like validates the work of my team and it's not, it's not about me as an individual. I think I am grateful to it, but I'm also cognizant of the fact that I am where I am or where we reached because of the team. And for that story to be told, it's really about the team and continue to celebrate that. One of the most satisfying things about the work of supporting others or supporting young people is you see the evidence of change from when you first meet someone to the next uh, steps uh, or change that they, who they become. Um, that's very satisfying for me because it's there, you see it with you know young person who came in who could not speak on camera and they joined and they started practicing and they have been mentored to become sort of like good TV presenter or news anchor or news reporter. Um, it's very satisfying and it's also not just satisfying but it's, it inspires you to think about okay we need to do more and we need to make sure that the next talent is even you know far much better than, than the ones that you've, you've already been working with. So. It's, uh, but also it's an honor really to be able to have the capacity to change other people's lives because you can, you know, change someone for, from, for the worst, but uh, we've been blessed, I guess, to be able to contribute whatever skills, passion we have to the lives of other people and, and make them better in societies. Starting the MCI, uh, as, as, as a movement, uh, you face you first a lot of challenges as young startups because from funding to not knowing what to do uh, to being doubted to 
you know, just this the struggle itself. So I think that the biggest challenge is not even funding. It's not knowing what to do. Uh, it's it's uh, just doing things uh, uh, driven by passion, but uh, knowing that you really don't understand what it means to be a CEO, for example. Uh, you've just been thrown into the deep end by fellow young people and they've trusted you with so much you know, power and to be able to lead and be a leader of an organization with no experience of being a leader is quite hectic. Uh, and I think um, a lot of people don't think about you know, young people who are leading organizations and what sort of support we can give them. There is a lot of people Young people are going through a lot of struggles, especially those who are leading in leadership positions because some have matured into the positions. So the, the, the lack of mentorship is, uh, is crucial and we need, to, we need to create mentorship opportunities for sort of like the next CEOs, the next leaders of this country uh, 20 uh, plus years from now because those are the ones that will be creating change in our country. In terms of building a team, I think it's really trust. Uh, it's trusting each and everyone that is on your team to be able to deliver. Uh, I was, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a CEO, I don't think that I knew anything about being it. I had to learn from like either reading or just listening to others, or just like feeling the trust that would come from my team. So first and foremost, if the team trusts you, then uh, you, you you probably do a good job, but that trust must be returned as well. So if they trust you, you must show that you also trust the team to be able to deliver uh, the, the project activities, the assignments, the activities. Um, of course, we can talk about skills really, but for me, it's uh, the commitment to vision. Yeah. So you could have the skills, but if you don't have the commitment to a certain big picture vision, you will struggle to work with a lot of people because you, 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 you are, your skills can limit you to just execute activities. Uh, but when you have, even if you had like very, you know, let's say limited skills, but you have a vision, you understand the vision of an organization or a vision of, 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 the, of the team, you will find ways to, because you're driven by that and your, your fire and desire will not stop. As a team leader and someone who is, you know, sort of supporting other people to grow in their career, I think that the, the biggest challenge you face is, is working with people from different backgrounds, but also that's, uh, I guess, the, the, the privilege that you have as, a, as a, a young leader, because at the end of the day, you learn to interact with people from different backgrounds. You, you get challenged by them, the way they think about things. You have to be open-minded to be able to appreciate like, oh, that person doesn't you know, agree with my position. Um, but I also should not be taking it for granted that my position must be right all the time. Uh, and I think for me as a leader and, and for any other leader out there to allow yourself to be challenged, to allow to listen more from your team rather than to speak more and speak over them so that they feel heard, they feel listened and even when, and it's not about just hearing, it's to make sure that once you've heard and listened, you are able to even support those ideas that are life into action. Um, Challenges, of course, you could you could say, of course, there is lack of skills sometimes where people are uh, still struggling to learn, especially in a, in a field like media that is highly practical. Uh, but then you have to build the capacity of your team. You know, not we we don't know it all, so always just building capacity, capacity, and seeing where that goes. The message I have for each, I think, for Af for Africa as a continent is that it has to be unity for us and uh, if you have if you have made uh, you know two steps forward you uh, you need to throw back the, la the ladder so that um, other 
other young people or people can, can you know sort of like follow your footsteps or climb uh, to the ladder of progress with you. In most cases we tend to pull away the ladder <laughs> which I think is very um, uh, unfair so we should create an opportunity to you know keep the ladder hold it so that other people can climb because where we want the continent to go really it can't be just a one-man game it has to be teamwork it has to be uh, collaborations across the continent um, it has to be conversations going on what's happening in Ghana what's happening in South Africa uh, what's happening in Libya in Mali in Djibouti um, what's happening in Mauritania, like all these countries are going through different experiences and especially me knowing like having connections in those countries, it's, um, it's, it's really important that we stay connected. It's really important. If you look at like the history of um, even post-independence and how our forefathers or you know, Pan-African ancestors uh, there was that connection between Tanzania, Ghana, Uganda, uh, all these countries, the Kwame Nkrumah, the Patrice Lumumba, being able to connect across and, and, and fight for a cause. And probably that's the same spirit if we want to move the continent forward, um, support each other, uh, create opportunities for others. If you have the privilege like I have to BSC or, um, or to own a space or to create a space uh, also work to make it feasible for others to use it rather than just it being about you I guess because it's uh, we are all you know, sort of like travelers in the world and um, I think that your legacy counts most if you have a trail of success behind you of people who can say oh I was mentored or I was helped or I was supported um, even if I am at the end of the day successful um, either through being a wealthy person or successful politically or socially or economically as long as I can't trace back um, a unit of uh, other young uh, fellow Africans that have supported then I really haven't achieved and I can't count myself um, to have a legacy. I think that if you're, if you're a dream chaser, chase your dream. Uh, there's nothing as, as, uh, as, as satisfying as chasing a dream that you know this is where I wanted to go. Uh, it's not about money, it's, it's just about that dream. It's about you being able to one day open your eyes and say, I, I have the dream. And the thing about the dream is that it really never dies. <laughs> like it could, uh, you could struggle to, to achieve something now when you wanted it, but you could take like a pause and stop and reflect for a year or two years or even or even five years and one day you will get you know a new form of, 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 of how that dream can be achieved so don't stop chasing don't stop dreaming um, keep keep on the game because that's the only way your, your dream can be realized <laughs>